היושב-ראש. This whole talk is trying to develop an uh, algorithm so that we have guidelines how to treat gross plate injuries. Uh, it's easy, it's work in progress. It's mostly for residents. Uh, however, as you are going to see, it might be quite helpful. Uh, so before I present this algorithm, just one word, several points to be considered whenever you have gross plate injury. The most important one is the age at the time of injury. Everyone knows this. The younger the child is, the more severe the injury. The nature and the severity of trauma, although this is not entirely true, because all Salter type injuries can cause gross plate uh, injury. The location, it's well known that distal femur, uh, because it's high energy trauma, have more gross arrest than any other uh, gross plate in the whole body. And then the, the decision is this a partial or it's a total uh, gross plate injury. That's what we are going uh, to see now. Uh, if there is a bony bar, is it resectable or not? If there is no bony bar, can hemiepiphysiodesis uh, help? Most importantly, three issues need to be addressed in the child, skeletally immature. Number one, we have to correct the deformity. Number two, we have to maintain the correction. And number three, we have to address the LLD that we calculate that might happen at skeletal maturity. So these three are extremely important uh, to consider. So what is this algorithm? And as I said, it's work on progress, and I would really welcome any uh, criticism from your part. So the first thing, is it a partial or it's a complete? If it's a complete, then it's not a problem. We know that it's LL, uh, an LLD. The treatment depends at the LLD at skeletal maturity, and then you have all the options available here. So if it's a partial gross arrest, the next thing to consider, is there a bony bridge, or if there is no bony uh, bridge. If there is no bony bridge, this means there is only a sick physis that continues to grow at a different rate, then the treatment should be hemiepiphysiodesis to correct the deformity and then observe. Maybe that's all what uh, we will need. If there is a bony bridge, the next question is, is it resectable or non-resectable? And if it is resectable, do we have also an associated, an associated deformity or not? If there is no deformity and it is resectable, well, resect it and then continue to observe. Nothing needs more to be done. If there is a deformity, then we go here. So a partial gross arrest that is resectable with a deformity, you do a hemiepiphysiodesis and observe. The next one now, you have a bony bar that is not resectable. It is three here that these three are very important. You have to correct the alignment. You have here to maintain it and then correct the LLD. How to correct the malalignment? There are several techniques. The first one, you can do an acute correction. And here you fix it either with a plate or a nail. The second thing, you do your gradual correction with an external fixator. Or the third option, you have your gradual correction and you uh, correct the LLD and all simultaneously with the next fix. So these are to correct the malalignment. How to maintain now your correction? It's by completing the epiphysiodesis of the contralateral side of the physis. And if you don't do it, then the deformity will come back. So you have addressed this and this. The LLD, you address it according to your standard uh, methods uh, technique. More recently, in the skeletal immature, you can use the precise nail for correction of deformity and correction of LLD at the same time. So what we found is that with this algorithm, most gross plate injury in at least three pediatric hospitals fall under uh, this thing. And what we are going to uh, go now is four examples that will use this algorithm. So case one, Typical Blount's disease, where you have this virus deformity. The physis here is sick. Its length is called one or two, uh, whatever you want. Uh, and it's a sick physis, no bony bridge. What do you do? So if you go to the algorithm, we have here no bony bridge, but there is a sick physis. The treatment is you do a hemiphysiodesis and you observe. And that's what you have done. 
We have now a early blount. By the way, that's our standard treatment of blunts. Now we stopped using braces. You put your gross plate here on the lateral side. You wait until it's overcorrect, and that's all what needs to be done. So that's the first case. Second case, you have a four-year-old boy sustained trauma to his left ankle. As you can see here, there is a partial growth arrest due to a, a bony bar. The next question is, is it resectable or not? How do you do this? It's a well-described technique. We are not going to talk to, uh, now, but it is resectable. So you have a bony bar that is resectable. What do you do? If you go to the algorithm, a bony bar here that is uh, resectable with no deformity, yet you resect and you observe. That's what was done. We have here the bony bar. No deformity yet has developed, so you resect it. And the technique, again, there are various techniques. The way we do it now, that was one of my uh, colleagues. Uh, you go from a metaphysical window. We have an O-arm in the hospital. You use the O-arm to accurately localize where you are going to resect it. You resect it uh, here, and then you put your uh, marker, and that's the follow-up that there is continuous growth in this part as evidenced by this. So that's the uh, third example. The third example uh, here, you have a 10-year-old injury at the ankle, limping short leg, and there is a physis here that it's more than 50%. This means it's not resectable. So you have a non-resectable bar with a virus deformity. What do you do? So if you go back to the algorithm here, we have a bony bridge. It's not resectable. Then you have to address these three things. How to correct the malalignment? What was decided in that case is that you do an acute correction with a plate. There are the two other options which you didn't do. How to maintain the correction? Hemiepiphysiodesis. And the third one, you deal with the LLD. So what we did here, first, you correct the malalignment with an acute correction. We did an open wedge osteotomy. You fix it with a locking plate. So that took care of the acute correction. If you don't do anything after this, the deformity will come back because you have not uh, really addressed the, the, other, the other side of the deformity here. So we do a hemi-epiphysiodesis or complete epiphysiodesis so that, uh, sorry, that's on the co contralateral uh, side. We did the epiphysiodesis on the lateral side here to prevent any recurrence of the deformity. So that's addressed here. And then the LLD, we calculated here the LLD uh, at uh, skeletal maturity. And then a precise nail was put and the LLD addressed. So that's the third example. Fourth example, we have a 13-year-old uh, patient, a recurvatum deformity of the proximal tibia and a partial gross arrest. That's a common, fr a common gross arrest that we see. Uh, we had seven patients like this. Uh, the patient had a fractured femur, and during a fractured femur, uh, ligaments can be injured here that are missed. Proximal tibia might be injured that also missed. So that's what happened. So if you go back to the algorithm, it's a non-resectable bony bridge. You have the three things to address. You complete, you uh, correct the malalignment, and you have your three options. We opted for this one to address the malalignment and the, and, uh, the LLD. What was done? is you applied and uh, we applied then uh, a laser of fixator, we apply now a TSF, corrected the malalignment and lensed it to correct the LLD at the same time as the patient was, ne was near skeletal maturity. Fourth, fifth case that I don't know yet where to put it, but uh, I'm working on it. We're completing this classification. What happened here is that there is an injury and there is a central bar here. It's not resectable, and there is no, not yet any angulation. So you can say, wait, and then observe what happens. However, what might happen, and what happened here, if this part here at the center doesn't grow, but here and here it grows, 
It might lead to an intra-articular deformity, and that's what, might ha what happened uh, here. And it was a mistake to wait, because now there is also a malalignment besides an intra-articular deformity. So in that case, what we should be doing, once there is a central bar that is non-resectable, we should complete the epiphysiodesis completely, and then deal with the LLD at a later stage. Otherwise, you will have an intra-articular deformity. So I have to add this in the big uh, uh, algorithm. And as I said, the, what we are doing now in several hospitals, we take all these patients and, and try to fit them so that this algorithm uh, should be uh, complete and give some guidelines. So we hope that this algorithm facilitates the planning. And that's the most important thing that we should not forget. We have to correct the deformity. It doesn't matter at what age. We don't know how much virus valgus we have to accept. But as soon as there is a virus or valgus, this means it will progress. And it has to be dealt with immediately. However, that's only part of the solution. The second part is you have to maintain the correction. And that's by completing the epiphysiodesis. And then you address the LLD and follow up skeletal maturity, it's a must. And the recommendation now is that all gross plate injury should be followed at least for 18 months so that we discover early any gross plate arrest. Thank you.